Well, good morning and welcome to our Godly Place session for today, which is the third Sunday of Lent. This really is the most curious box in the room. Every other story in the room, almost every story in this room, actually comes from this box. This is the greatest parable. Do you remember? Do you remember last week we we said that this is such a, a big story that it needs a prologue? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. This is the story of the words that were written about the Word. The story from which all the other stories come. Shall we open it? This is the Annunciation. This is the transfiguration. This is the resurrection. God came close to the Mother Mary. God came close to the the three on the mountain and the three who were watching. And God came close to the, the women and the men who, who first encountered the risen Christ. And God comes close to us today. The baby grew up and became an adult. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he went into the desert to learn more about who he was and what his work was going to be. When he was finished, he crossed back over the Jordan River and went to his hometown, to the synagogue where he had worshipped all his life. He unrolled the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and he read the words about the coming of a Messiah. When he was finished, he rolled the scroll back up and gave it to the worship leader. And he turned to the people and said, Today, this has been fulfilled in your presence. Well, the people were, were confused. It sounded like he was saying that he was the Messiah. Well, they knew that, that he was the son of Mary and Joseph, not the son of God. But how could they know? I wonder, would you or I have recognized who Jesus really was? The people were very upset. They took him outside of town to throw him off a cliff. But he calmly walked back through the people and into the hills. And as he walked, he thought to himself, Prophets are honored everywhere but at home.
Jesus had so much work to do that he knew he could not do it alone. He would need help. But who would help him? As he was walking along the shore of the, the great lake of Galilee, he called his first disciples, Peter and Andrew, who were brothers, and they were also fishermen. Jesus said to them, follow me and I will show you how to fish for people, not just fish. In the boat were two other brothers, James and John. They were mending the nets with their father, Zebedee. When Jesus called them, they, they jumped out of the boat and they began to follow him. Soon, there were 12 other, or 12 disciples in total, who were following Jesus. They had much to learn. And so Jesus began to teach them. One day, Jesus took his followers up a mountain to teach them. Other people saw them on their way and they followed them because they wanted to learn as well. The first thing Jesus did was bless them. The nine blessings that he gave them that day are sometimes called the Beatitudes. They are ordinary yet remarkable ways of being that blesses all those around them. They make people truly happy. That is where the word Beatitudes comes from. It comes from the Latin word Beatus, which means happy or blessed. They truly were happiness makers. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that Jesus taught many other things that day, including the Lord's Prayer. We call this the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus didn't just teach on mountains. The Gospel of Luke tells us about the Sermon on the Plain. And sometimes Jesus taught when he was just walking and talking. The Annunciation, the Transfiguration, the Resurrection, the baby grew up and became an adult, went to his hometown and unrolled a scroll, called his followers and began to teach them and others. These are the words the words about the Word. And there is so much, so much more.
And so join me next week when we continue this story, The Greatest Parable. And in the meantime, have a, have a lovely third Sunday and third week of Lent. Thank you.